when the thickness of the length is not negligible, we call that thick length. In thin lenses, convex or convex, the distance between front surface and back surface is really little that it will affect the power in very small amount. So we will not consider it in our calculation. So the lens meters formula in the thin lenses 1 over f which is the power also equal the refractive index of the lens minus 1 multiplied by 1 over the first radius of curvature minus 1 over the second radius of curvature and of course this one when the lens in the air so if you see there is no distance at all in this formula but if we have a thick one a thick lens like that The distance between the front surface and back surface is really big that it will affect our power so we have to consider it in our formula. So the lens maker's formula for the thick lens will be 1 over f which also is the power of the lens equal so far it's the similar with the thin lenses but here we have to consider the distance between the back and the front surfaces so we have to add those refractive index of the lens minus one multiplied by the distance between the front and the back surface of the thick lens and all of that divided by refractive index of the lens by first radius of curvature by second radius of curvature and of course this formula when lens surrounded by air that's why it's one here what if it's not inside the air let's say for example it's inside the water here for air but if we have the lens in different or inside different material so when over f or the power of the lens equal refractive index of the lens minus refractive index of the surrounding medium divided by the refractive index of the space surrounding space and those multiplied by 1 over the first radius of curvature minus 1 over the second radius of curvature and of course we need to consider the thickness so the refractive index of the lens minus the refractive index of the surrounding medium over refractive index of the surrounding medium. Those multiply by the thickness of the lens and divided by refractive index of the lens by first radius of curvature by second radius of curvature. We can simplify it more to become like this so this will be the lens makers formula for the thick lens when we have that lens inside different medium such as water the sign convention here in thick lenses is similar to the sign convention in thin lenses that's our axis and that's our lens. Up the axis is positive, right the axis is positive, beneath the axis is negative, left to the axis is negative too. Focal length for concave lens always negative. Focal length for convex lens always positive.
So exactly the same sign convention that we use in the thin lens, we will use here in thick lenses. What about the ray tracing and image forming in thick lenses? Thin lenses will refract the light just one time. And we measure the distance from the center of the lens. So this is the center of the lens. And when we want to measure any distance, we will measure it from that center. For example, the focal length, we will measure it between the center here and the focal point. The object distance, for example, we will measure it from the center here again to the location of the object. The light will refract only once. That's our incident ray. It will refract all the diameter of thin lens. But what about the thick lenses? Here our thick lens, the front surface and the back surface. And here we have the distance between them. In thick lens, when the axis pass through the center of the lens, it will not bend. So also here we have the center of the lens. That's the focal point or the focus of the lens. When we have light that coming from the focal point, they will bend here for the first time. So they will refract here first in the front surface. And then they will refract again in the second surface. So in thick lenses, the light will refract two times. That refracted rays will refract parallel to the principal axis. Let's enlarge it here. If we imagine a complete that refracted light here, that one we complete it here, the imaginary will cross in this point. If we complete that as line, it will give us something we call it primary principal plane. Or also we can call it the first principal plane. And we can give it that sign, H1. So, primary principle plane form when light coming from the first focus point will refract. And the two imaginary rays coming from that refracted ray will intersect at the primary principle plane. If the light will come from the opposite side, from the second focal plane, point. Again, it will refract from the first surface, which is back here, changing its direction to bend again from the second surface parallel to the principal axis. When we imaginary complete those refracted lines, it will give us the second plane or the secondary plane. So that's H2. The second or the secondary principal plane. The same way in the thin lenses, the focal length here will equal the focal length here. But the measurement will not start from the center of the lens, but it will start from the plane. So this focal length, we will measure it from the secondary plane to the focus, and in the opposite side, we will we will measure it from the primary principal plane to the very focus. So the measurement here is start from the planes, not from the center of the lens. That's the focal length, and that's the focal length. And also we have the same lens formula. When over the image distance plus one over the object distance, 
will equal 1 over the focal length. And since we have the same sign convention, if the object here, that means it will be negative. If the image here, that means this distance will be positive. So again, in this formula, for distance object, we have to put the minus. Then, so far, we have two differences between the thin and thick lens. The first one, the measurement will start from the plane to the object, to the distance, to the focal point, whatever we want, but it will start from the plane, not from the center as in the thin lenses. The second one, we have two time refraction, not just one. In the thick lenses, we have the frontal vertex, as number one, and the backward vertex, which means the height of the lens here. So if we want to find out this height, the first height and the second height and the second height, we can use law, we call it Oliver's law. Oliver's law also help us to find the refractive index of the lens. So the first vertex or the frontal vertex and the primary principal plane, the distance between V and H, which is the small h number one, will equal the focal length multiplied by the refractive index of the lens minus one multiplied by the distance thus divided by the refractive index multiplied by the second radius of curvature if you look at the lens this one here will be the second radius of curvature and this one here will be the first radius of curvature so to find the fairest height which depends on the focal length refractive index distance or thickness of the lens and the radius of curvature of the second surface quite the same for the second height the backward vertex to the secondary plane which is the height number two that equal the focal length multiplied by the refractive index of the lens minus one multiplied by the distance which is the thickness of the lens divided by the refractive index and this time since it's the second height we will depend on the first radius of curvature so what is the distance or the thickness of the lens the distance of the lens we will measure it from frontal vertex to the backward vertex that's our distance or the thickness of the lens in thicknesses we have something also we call it the nodal points so that's our axis that's our thick lens In each thick lens system, we have interesting points. We call them nodal points. When we have incident light, that seems it will complete to that point, the nodal point. The refractive beam, the refractive beam will appear to have come from the other nodal point. It will seem that it's coming from the second one. And the real refraction is this passing from the center of the lens. So that's the first nodal point and that's the second nodal point. They are really helpful to define the optical center and the angular magnification because the angles here are matching. This one matches this one. Nodal points N1, N2. The focal point F1, F2, and the planes 
the primary and secondary planes H1 and H2 those three pairs we call them the cardinal points Cardinal points are really important to identify the location of the image, the orientation, the angle, the size. So basically, the properties of image depends in thick lenses on the cardinal points. And also, they help us to find the center of the lens. If that lens with a specific refractive index Surrounded by the same refractive index, which means the refractive index in front of the lens, similar to the refractive index behind the lens, for example, air here and air here also, then the nodal point and the principal point are coincident, which means those N1 and N2 will be here with the planes, the ferrous nodal with the primary plane and the second nodal with the secondary plane but that is the refractive index in front of the lens similar to the refractive index behind the lens the planes point and the nodal point are coincident when the lens plays in a similar refractive index for front surface and back surface. In thin lenses, the nodal point located at its center. So the optical center of thin lenses is the same nodal point of that lens. Since the principal planes are an hypothetical plane where we assume the refraction takes place, that means as the shape of the lens change, the position of its principal plane may change too. The same way in thin lenses. In thick lenses also we have different shapes. When they are both curved outside, they are biconvex. The same curvature or not the same curvature, they are biconvex. Or plane or convex, when we have a concave surface with flat surface and we have the positive meniscus lens when we have a convex lens with small curve concave lens of course the power here will be more in the front surface since it's more curved than the back surface here the focal length will be of course positive and even the power of the lens is positive since it's a converging lens here the focal length is negative since the power of the lens is negative too because they are diverging lens they could be by concave when they are both concave lenses or plano concave when one of them is flat of course the power will be in this area and the flat area the power is zero the negative meniscus lens when we have a high curve concave lens with small curve positive lens so here the high power will be in the back surface with the change of the shape of the surfaces we will have different positions for the planes the secondary one h prime and the primary one h each one of those have a different position according to the shape of the lens okay how can we determine the location of those to know that we need to know the vertex and the equivalent power of the lens So what are those? So let's imagine we have two thin lenses like this and you want to calculate the magnification 
the position of the formed image and to do that here is your object the formed image from that object which is this one for example that's the object number one and the image number one for the object number one this image will be the object for this lens for backward lens so this is object number two this one and it will form image number two with the same principles so that's image number two so to calculate that you can use the lens formula which one over f equal one over distance of the image plus one over the distance of the object and of course we need to remember the sign so the distance of the object for the first one here it is and the distance of the image of the first lens will be here then the distance between the first image which will be the second object for the second lens this one will be the distance of the object for the second lens and this is the image distance formed by the second lens so you will use this formula two times or you can use equation that we call it Goldstrand equation This equation can be used to calculate the effective focal length of thick lens or two separated thin lenses. And it's really effective to calculate the front and back vertex power. So we can use the equation that says the total power will equal the first power, which means the power that formed by the first lens plus the second power which means the power formed by the second lens minus the fairest power multiplied by second power but a very important thing that we have it here is the distance between the first lens and the second lens so we have to consider it here and from this one you can easily find the power of the whole system and even the focal length since power equals 1 over the focal length if we connect them to each other like that you will find out the thick lenses look like two thin lenses with distance between them so it will be like this that's the frontal surface and that's the back surface and that's the distance between them and here is our axis so in thick lenses basically we have the object which refraction for the first time will form the image and this image will be the object for the second surface or the back surface so it will refract to form the second image so we can use the Goldstrand equation in thick lens to find out the total power of the thick lens the only difference here between two thin lenses that here we have refractive index to be considered so the Goldstrand equation for thick lens will be the power equal the power of the first surface this one the front one plus the power of the second surface this one the back one minus the first power multiplied by the second power but this time plus the distance we have to consider the refractive index of the lens and since the power equal the inverted focal length we can write this equation 
in different way depending on the focal length. So those two Gauss triangle system for thick lens and this one, the blue one, for thin lens. The only difference that we don't have refractive index in the thin lens. Thick lenses has more power than thin lenses, which means the focal length in thin lenses longer than the focal length in thick lenses. Since they are inversely proportional. In clinical application, we are interested in the power of lens with respect to their front surface and back surface more than the planes. So this is the frontal surface and this is the frontal vertex and as we said vertex is the height this one is the back surface which means this is the back vertex so the frontal vertex has a power and the back vertex also has a power so we can use either this or this so we are interested in this or this more than the planes. So how can we find them? Back vertex power, which means the power here, will equal the power of the first surface, which is this one, that's number one. And this is number two, divided by one minus the distance over the refractive index of the lens multiplied by the first power all of that plus the second surface power mostly when we write prescription for the patient we depend on the back vertex power and also we have an instrument we call it lensometer lensometer is an instrument that we use it to measure the power of lens the lensometer also depends on the back vertex power. What about the frontal vertex power? We can use it also, but mostly it depends on the back one. The same of the back vertex, but this time with the opposite values. So the frontal vertex power will equal the second surface power subdivided by 1 minus the distance of the lens or the thickness of the lens divided by the refractive index of the lens multiplied by the second surface power all of that plus the first surface power the front vertex also we call it the neutralizing power we can use also the power of the frontal surface and back surface to find out the equivalent power and the equivalent power is really important to find out the location of the planes. So, the equivalent power, Fe, let's write it, equivalent power, will equal the first surface power plus the second surface power minus the thickness of the lens divided by the refractive index of the lens multiplied by first surface power by second surface power and we need this equation to find out the location of the principal planes that's our lens that's the first surface power that's the second surface power we need to find those planes and of course as we said it depends on the shape of the lens and from this location to this location from front to back vertex that's the thickness of the lens to find out the primary plane and the secondary plane we can use 
the equivalent power. We can find it out by measuring the distance between the apex here to the plane here, which is h. And from the apex here to the plane here, which is h prime. The secondary one. h here will equal the distance or the thickness of the lens to refractive index in the second surface power, valence power. So when you find this one, you can find the location of this plane and to find out the location of the second plane, the secondary plane, we can say h prime equal the thickness of the lens to the refractive index, but this time it's negative. And this one multiplied by the first surface power, the equivalent power. All those distance here by meters, since we have diopters. So this one by meter, this one by meter, and all of those powers, the ferrous surface power, the vertex power, the equivalent power, all of them by diopters. What about the magnification in thick lenses? Here our thick lens and that's our axis. Here our object and that's our image. As we said, in thick lenses we measure from the planes, not from the center. So we measure the image distance from the secondary plane and we will measure the object distance from the primary plane. In linear magnification of thick lens, as with the thin lens, we can find it out by the ratio of the distance of the image to the ratio of the object distance, which means magnification in thick lens equal image distance to object distance. And of course, we should consider the time convention. Distant object always negative and distance of the image depends on the location of the image. We can find out the magnification of the thick lens also from the height of the object and the height of the image. So it could be the ratio of the height of the image to the height of the object. Since the object above the axis, that means the height is positive. If the negative is real, that means it will be inverted, meaning it's beneath the axis, so it will be negative. But if it's a virtual image, that immediately means it will be above the axis, so the image height will be positive. And that's how you can find the magnification, the linear one. Another effective way to find out the magnification in thick lens is to use something we call it Newton formula. So let's say we have the thick lens here, this one, that's our thick lens. Let's say that's our focal point, and this one is the frontal focal point. And as we said, in thick lens, we measure from the plane. So we will measure from H prime and H from the plane to F, that's the focal length, to the right and to the left. Focal length. From the plane to the image, that's the image distance. From the plane to the object, that's the object distance. But what about from F to the image and from F to the object? So let's call this one XI, which means the distance between the image and the focal point, and this one XO, which is the distance between 
focal point and the object. So instead of using all this distance, we can just depend on this one. The distance between the focal point and the image and the distance between the focal point and the object. So Newton's formula states that the focal length is square will equal the distance between the focal length and the image multiplied by the distance between the focal length and the object. This Newton's formula works both in thick lens and thin lens. We can use it also to find out the magnification. So we can say the magnification is the ratio between the distance of focal point to the image to the focal length so magnification will equal the distance between the focal points and image to the focal length or it could equal over the, the focal length the focal point and the object so this one is effective one to find out the linear magnification also. What about the angular magnification? Here in thick lenses, we will depend on the nodal point. That's N1, and that's N2. And that our incident light, the refracted light, will come from here. So this angle here will equal the angle here. With different angles of incidence, we can measure and compare those angles to find out the angular magnification. What if we have two thick lenses and we want to count their focal length, or let's say the effective focal length, so that's the lens number one, and that's the other lens. So we want the effective focal length for those together, not just one. So we will count the focal length for this one and this one and we should consider the distance between them. Or briefly we can use this equation. The effective focal length will equal 1 over the fairest focal length, which means the focal length of the fairest lens, plus the focal length of the second lens, minus the distance over fairest focal length multiplied by the second focal length. And of course, we need to remember the sign convention. For example, if this one was concave lens like that, so the focal length here will be minus so you see there is a lot of formula you have to remember and to select the right one when you have a problem to resolve you have more than one system more than one lens and you want the effective focal length this is your right formula and if and if for example you're missing this one but here you have your image distance and object distance we can use the lens formula, this one. So you will find this one for the first focal length. Then you will use this formula. If you need a magnification, you can use those formula. If you need to locate the lens, you can use those formula. If you have the equivalent power and the surfaces power for the first one and the second one. Or if you don't have those power and you have the radius of curvature, you can use those formula. This one. Here also you can find the location of the planes, H, but here you will depend on the radius of curvature and the focal length. And of course that's your lens maker's formula. So you just need to select the right formula.